Hello and welcome to a chessma chess. Let's learn a quick way to win with white in the romantic style using the Danish gambit. And at the end of the video, I will also teach you how to neutralize this gambit if somebody tries it against you. Chapter 1. Tapia and history. So you play with the white pieces and you open up with pawn to e4 best by test. And if your opponent plays the most popular move in this position, pawn to e5, you can start the Danish gambit. So the first move of this opening, of this particular opening, is pawn to d4, gambiting this pawn. The best move for black and the most popular move is simply e takes d4, like so. So you have gambited the first pawn. And probably your opponent will think, ah, I get them, because they will expect you to recapture with the queen, and then they can win a tempo against your queen. Your queen will have to move again. But we've had one gambit, yes. But what about second gambit? So you're not going to recapture that pawn anytime soon. We save that for later. We play pawn to c3. And this uh, is a bit of a problem for them now. Because if they allow you, if they play some normal move, and they allow you to capture like this, you will have a very good position with control of all of these squares. They, of course, cannot allow this. So they play what is the best move and the most popular move. D takes C3. So now we've gambited two pawns. But three is the magic number. It's the magic number. Yes, it is. So you're not going to recapture this pawn. No, you are going to play bishop c4. And uh, now if you watch some of my other videos, you may begin to get an idea about some nasty business, you know, that can happen here on f7. And um, if you are above, say, 1500, 1600, if you play against opponents that are you know, pretty proficient chess players, 1500, 1600 and above, you may see them decline the third pawn and play a move like knight to c6. You still have many, many, many uh, traps here and a fine position, but if you are facing stronger opposition, you may want to study this move. Uh, absolutely the most popular move, though, is c takes b2, the third pawn has been gambited, and now we really have to recapture that pawn, because otherwise they are going to capture the rook in the corner and make a queen, and even for an opening as romantic as this one, that's a bit much. So you capture with the bishop, you capture the pawn on b2. So that is the gambit. You give up three pawns and you regain one. So you are down two pawns. Okay. And this is the tapia position of the Danish gambit. But why is it called the Danish gambit? Where does these uh, where do the, these moves come from? This uh, Gambit is named after, surprise, a Danish dude by the name of Martin Severin Jonas Fromm. And Fromm, you may know from the Fromm's Gambit, 
which uh, he also pioneered and invented. Um, this opening may actually be attributed to a Swede. There is uh, some debate over if it was the Danish guy or the Swedish guy who played it first. Uh, but what is certain is that it got named after the Danish guy. Martin Severin Fromm used it in 1867 in a huge international tournament in Paris. And Martin was a very interesting person. He is, as far as we know, the first Danish person to participate in an international chess tournament. He was a knight of the Danish flag. Uh, as a sort of thank you for his participation in some wars and he also was a poet um, he was actually friends with the great Danish poet H. C. Anderson who wrote The Ugly Duckling and The Little Mermaid amongst many other beloved stories and he also was a very important person for Danish chess Martin was because he co-founded the biggest chess club in Copenhagen which is still going strong today and is the oldest surviving chess club in Denmark. And now let's get to chapter 2. Black's problems with developing the king's knight. Okay, so you have reached the tabia position What's going on? Why did you sacrifice or gambit all those pawns? Well, you have a huge lead in development. This bishop is a monster. This bishop is a monster. The queen can very quickly get into the game. And you also have a pawn here in the middle of the board. What does black have? Nothing at all. Nothing at all, really, except they are ahead with two pawns. But other than that, they are just here where they started. And the king's knight here, let's say they want to develop that. We see that in many, many games. So knight to f6. And um, let's just go all romantic berserk uh, right away. And play pawn to e5. This attacks the knight. Where is this knight going to go? Here and here, covered by the queen. Just going to get lost, okay. How about here? Covered by the bishop. Probably not going to go back. If they do, you're just very heavy because you just gained a free move and you can continue the game. But the most popular move, what we see the most often, particularly at the lower levels, is knight e4. And here you should get a tinkling sensation, and that should be your spidey sense that goes off. Why? Because here you can sack the bishop on f7. So you play bishop takes f7, that is check. They recapture with the king, losing their right to castle and expose their king. And then you simply pick up the knight in a small to move combination. Queen to d5, check. King goes back and you capture the knight. And here you have uh, still gambited a single pawn. But the king will have a very, very tough time getting out of the center because they have already moved, so they can't castle. And you still have a huge lead in development. Um, and you should be very, very comfortable here. Play out the knights. Remember to play probably the knight via e2 so as not to block the bishop. Start with this knight, castle, get the rooks to the open file and just have a lot of fun demolishing black. Okay, what if they try to get fancy? What if they try to get cute? Let's rewind, rewind all the way back to the starting position. Why? 
because we are going to repeat this because repetition is very very good for learning openings and then I'll show you a way that they can try to get cute and I'll show you how to punish it e4 e5 d4 e takes d c3 d takes c bishop c4 b takes c takes b and bishop takes b2 we reached the tabia position and we were looking at the variation where they try to play knight to f6 you of course push and here uh, we sometimes see them try to get cute with bishop to b4 check and their idea is that if you play knight here you are making this bishop a lot worse and if you play knight here which is what you're going to play knight to d2 they think that they can play knight e4 attacking the pinned piece but the pins uh, in, in general they are going to work out in your favor because it's it can be very tough to utilize a pin for your own advantage if you are very much behind in development you are so far ahead in development so you have so much stuff you can throw at your opponent and um, you are going to punish them for this as well with the same idea this is very beginner friendly because the first thing you think about is can i sack on f7 yes you can bishop takes f7 what does this have to do with this attack here with the two pieces well king takes bishop and you'll notice that the queen can't go here because it's blocked by the knight you're actually also not going to go here for this check trying to pick up the knight because you have an even better move you play queen b3 check and funnily enough uh, if you put this position into a internet version of stockfish like the one they have on leeches or chess.com they say it says that at first at the first couple of like five seconds or something it says that black is only slightly worse because they have pawn to d5 so they can survive but if you know internet culture and chess culture if you are a gentleman gentlewoman gentle person and scholar you know that ang pasang is forced pawn takes pawn like this discovered check and when you put this into the machine it suddenly realizes oh my god black is completely crushed which is which is sort of interesting that it's even today uh some of the lower depth versions of stockfish can actually yeah uh, misevaluate positions quite badly and now the king has to go somewhere so here or here unless they are like super brave and goes up here where they'll just get murdered pretty quickly so let's say they go back and you pick up the bishop you are threatening here and you have yeah just uh, just going to have a lot of fun here and a solid advantage so that was chapter one their problems with developing their king's knight now let's go to chapter three when black tries to prevent e5 we put all the pieces back put them back going to repeat why because it's good for memorization it will help you actually employ this opening and win a bunch of games with them out there in the real world or on the internet that you may or may not consider the real world e4 e5 d4 e takes d c3 d takes c and bishop to c4 pawn takes pawn bishop takes pawn and 
we saw that knight to f6 that was very tough for them to play because you have this move e5 chasing away the knight and you can gain advantage in a just in a multitude of ways after that so they may try d6 this has the aim of stopping e5 fair enough but you continue development knight to f3 and here you are just enjoying a huge lead in development you're going to have a lot of fun and i'll illustrate a couple of the ways that black can go extremely wrong extremely quickly um, so we'll just focus on on the sex here on f7 and i'll just show some different ways that you can sack something on f7 sack the bishop on f7 and gain an advantage uh, because it's not only the queen that can come out with a check after the second beat deadly so uh, for instance the third most popular move here particularly at the lower levels is uh, bishop to g4 pinning this knight developing a piece but again when you are behind the development it's very rare that you can really make the pings uh, work in your favor and indeed we see the same problem here um, you're going to capture on f7 again that is check king recaptures and now this uh, this cool move that kind of illustrates why one of the ways let's say uh one of the reasons why it is extremely useful to be ahead in development knight e5 check see that is a delicious move to play that is one of the reasons this is considered a romantic opening not only because it was played in the romantic age uh, the romantic era but also because that era had all these principles of chess beauty sacrificing sacrificing they looked for genius and inspiration and this just is a beautiful delicious move to play because you're saying hey you can just capture my queen oh wait a minute you can't because it's check but that shouldn't work because this square is attacked well if they of course if they capture the knight that's not going to work because the queen hangs so that doesn't work and the problem for them is if they um, don't capture the knight they go somewhere let's say back to e8 you're just going to capture the bishop and have an absolutely dominating advantage this opening has a million traps and uh, you can play it and maybe uh, put some comments here if you have some questions about you see some variation what do I do against this I'll be happy to try and answer them in the comments but let's now go to chapter to the final chapter black bails out and in this case let's let's uh, reset the board again again now i'm going to teach you what to do if somebody tries this opening against you so now you're with the black pieces they play e4 you play e5 d4 e takes d c3 you're just going to accept it all the way d takes c bishop c4 c takes b2 bishop takes b2 and here you have the secret move to neutralize this opening you're going to give the pawn back because you can't really accept being this far behind in development but even if you give one pawn back with pawn to d5 you will still be up a pawn and here their best move is to play b6 
bishop takes so they maintain all these tricks with bishop takes on f7 you play knight to f6 which you can do now because e5 doesn't really work and here you're going to have to memorize this practice this a couple of times before you you play this uh, because it's a little complicated but it uh, it does neutralize the opening completely they may think that they got you now because they sack on f7 that is check and you capture and probably they will think now that you have completely lost it because queen takes queen looks like it is should we say a pretty serious advantage for white so why is it that you are happy to play this it is because bishop to b4 is check you are now threatening to simply capture the queen and um, if if they just try something like knight here you just capture um, but if they know what they're doing they'll play the best move which is queen back um, to d2 you're going to capture that bishop takes d2 knight takes d2 and we have now reached this position which is 100 percent completely equal um, they gambited three pawns you gave all of them back neutralized all of their attack your king is very very happy to be on f7 now because it's actually pretty hard for them to attack this they have no queen that can attack on the light squares and no light squared bishop and you have this rook that can come in very quickly and we're just going to develop the other minor pieces and then this rook here and the last point other than this being completely equal position uh, so white has lost their opening advantage and the, the last point here is that they are playing an aggressive sacrificial opening where they want to gambit one pawn two pawns three pawns and sacrifice a bishop like what they want this attacking game and you're just playing this psychological trick on them where you just neutralize and diffuse all of their attacking ideas you are very close to being in an end game and they are going to be quite frustrated so you should be very happy in this position thank you so much for watching and also if you want to buy a chess set like this there is a link in the description that can take you to the world chess shop and you can use the code asmr chess 10 at the checkout to get a 10 percent um, discount and you also support the channel by doing so so it's kind of a win-win thanks for watching i hope i will see you in the next video